In the history of Hollywood icons, Humphrey Bogart was widely known as a tough guy with a heart of gold. This was carefully projected in most of the American actor's roles, as he was always an individualistic adventurer with a hardened exterior. By January 1957, Humphrey Bogart passed away at the age of 58. 25 years later, his wife sets the record straight on his passing. His wife, who passed away at 89, offered a candid look at her life and some insights on Bogart's life in her autobiography, By Myself. Join us for a story about one of the most iconic couples in Hollywood on a journey through love, illness, and everything in between. Humphrey DeForest Bogart, nicknamed Bogey, was born on December 25, 1899, in New York City. He was born to Belmont DeForest Bogart, a Presbyterian of English and Dutch descent, and Maud Humphrey, an Episcopalian of English heritage. His father worked as a cardiopulmonary surgeon, while his mother was a commercial illustrator who once used a drawing of baby Humphrey in an advertising campaign for Mellon's Baby Food. It is widely known that Bogart's birthday was often changed by Warner Bros. to December 23rd because they did not believe that his fans would believe his performances as villains if he was born on Christmas Day but he always celebrated his birthday on December 25th. Bogart grew up with his two younger sisters, Frances and Catherine Elizabeth, in a formal household with very little physical affection. He put on plays with groups of friends at the lake. While in boarding school, he failed and was expelled for throwing a member of the faculty into a pond, smoking, drinking, poor academic performance, and inappropriate comments made to the staff. With no career options before him, Bogart enlisted in the United States Navy. He tried to do the same during World War II, but was rejected. Later on, he returned home. His father was in poor health, and most of the family's wealth was lost through bad investments. And this is when he was pulled into the world of theater and acting. Bogart started his career with minor parts in stage plays. He first delivered one line of dialogue in a play titled Drifting in 1921, and then appeared in subsequent plays. He never took acting lessons and preferred to learn by doing. Although he was raised to believe acting was a lowly profession, he liked the attention they received. From 1922 to 1935, he played in 11 Broadway productions, 11 of which were comedies. Bogart transitioned from Broadway to Hollywood, starting by signing a contract with Fox Film Corporation for $750 a week. He was seen in Up the River in 1930 and Bad Sister in 1931. By 1934, he was launched into success with the Broadway play, Invitation to a Murder. It was so famous that it had 197 performances in New York. He then acted in the film, The Petrified Forest which was released in 1936. Following his success, Bogart often got typecast as a gangster in B-movie crime dramas. He didn't like the roles, but worked hard. This led to a persona, as he was often wounded, cynical, charming, stoical, vulnerable, and a self-mocking loner with a code of honor. By the 1940s, Bogart was well known as a legendary actor, with iconic roles in the Maltese Falcon and Casablanca, he was also in High Sierra as the leading actor. This led him to become a highly sought-after actor. In 1942, he played his first romantic lead in Casablanca. In 1944, Bogart and Lauren Bacall, who later got married despite their 25-year difference. They collaborated on the movie To Have and Have Not. A few months after this, the couple was called again for another film, The Big Sleep. By 1947, they acted in Dark Passage together. By 1948, he acted in The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, along with John Huston. Then he created his film company called Santana Productions, while still signed with Warner's Brothers. He made a film per year with the company, and later dissolved the contract in 1953. Many of his movies in Santana lost money at the box office. He also acted in The African Queen in 1951 and The Cane Mutiny in 1954, which bagged him his final Oscar nomination. In 1954, he played Sabrina with Audrey Hepburn, and in the same year, he acted in The Barefoot Contessa, which was filmed in Rome. 
He was known for being generous with actors who had personal problems, helping them on set and supporting them for roles. Bogart's final role was an American boxing film noir in 1956 titled The Harder They Fall. He has won 13 awards in his life, including the Academy Awards, Oscar Awards, and BAFTA Film Awards. In 1999, the American Film Institute named him the greatest male star of all time. Humphrey Bogart's personal life was busy, as he was married four times to different actresses and had two children. He was known to quote Alexander Pope, Plato, Ralph Waldo Emerson, and Shakespeare. Bogart was often seen as being quick to anger and had complex emotions. He was also a drinker and got into fistfights. In 1926, he married Helen Mencken, and they got divorced in 1927. By 1928, he married Mary Phillips, and by 1938, he married Mayo Method. But his most iconic marriage was with Bacall. When he met Lauren Bacall in 1945, he fell in love with her, and they got married. They remained together until he passed in 1957. Bogart had two children with Bacall, Stephen and Leslie. In 1956, Bogart realized he had esophageal cancer as he was a heavy smoker and drinker. The disease was so serious that he had to remove his esophagus, two lymph nodes, and a rib, but the surgery was unsuccessful. The cancer became worse, and by January 1957, he passed away. More than 20 years after Bogart had passed away, his last wife, Lauren Bacall, published a memoir titled, By Myself. It was there that she revealed insights into her relationship with Humphrey Bogart, including the truth about who he really was and hidden facts about his death. Bogart was known by the public and the industry as a tough guy, but Bacall reflects on how humane he really was. She described him as shy, gentle, open, and vulnerable, easily confiding in her about three failed marriages. Even during their small wedding, he cried in an outburst of emotion. By 1956, she noticed that her husband's cough sounded worse than usual. His throat also burned when he drank juice. She forced him to go to the hospital, where a test revealed an inflamed esophagus. A few weeks later, the doctors realized that there were irregular malignant cells in his esophageal tissue. They postponed his production until he recovered, but he unfortunately never did. She explained Bogart's experiences as he dealt with an illness. After the surgery, which took nine and a half hours, she recalled that his arm and hand were swollen and something was placed in his mouth to stop him from swallowing his tongue. He was surrounded by different machines, tubes, and bottles that were keeping him alive. Bogie didn't look like the Bogie she knew. For the first time, he appeared fragile and vulnerable. When he was sick, people often visited and phoned their house. However, the treatments made Bogart weak, causing Bacall to slow down the traffic by restricting and monitoring guests. The friends who came to visit were often shocked at the sight of him in bed. When producer Sam Goldwyn visited their home, he noticed Bogart's exposed leg and frail limb. He was so stunned that he turned away. It is surprising that Bacall revealed all these vulnerable and hidden facts about Bogart's last days before he passed away. But this was probably because she didn't want Hollywood to only see him as a confident and strong man who was violent and never had a problem. In the book, she said Bogart was a man with so many, many layers that, as well as I knew him, I'm sure I never uncovered them all. By knowing the true story, we can see that beneath the stiff exterior of a quick-tempered and hard-drinking actor, he was a complex and vulnerable man. And the romance between Bogart and Bacall will always be one of Hollywood's most authentic stories. What do you think of Bacall's decision to share the painful details of Bogart's last moments on Earth? And did this change the way you looked at this iconic actor? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.